Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And I'm excited about the things that we're going to bring to you today and what's going to take place tonight. But before I talk about any of those things, I want to uh, take the time uh, to acknowledge the passing of a man of God who touched so many for many, many years. He's the founder of CBN. He is the great the late, great Pat Robertson. Pat go, went home today to be with the Lord. And uh, I tell you, um, in my formative years, as I was growing up uh, in, in Christ, um, among the shows that my mother always turned to, to make sure we watched, was the 700 Club. And his impact on the body of Christ cannot be limited. And we thank God for the life that he lived. Uh, when I heard of his passing, Numbers chapter number 23 and verse 10 came to mind. The last clause that said, let me die the death of the righteous and let my end be like unto his. God blessed him to live a wonderful life. 93 years, the Lord blessed him to be on this earth, and he was a staunch promoter of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He entered into the fray of politics. He did many things, and he will surely be missed. And we say to the Christian Broadcasting Network, to CBN, we're praying for you, and may you continue to do the work of the Lord. Now, having said that, my friends, I want to take time to invite you to join us tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And, and you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I doing? I am overlooking the obvious. How you like the flag behind me? Whoo! Let me let me out of start the whole broadcast over and say happy Jesus Pride Month at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and I pray uh, in churches across America, churches uh, have designated the month of June, where we actually give God all 12, but uh, something unique takes place uh, in the month of June, and that is there are those who are trying to give the month of June over to the LBGTQ a community and to dedicate this beautiful month that God made to a lifestyle that the Bible calls an abomination. And so here at the church, we believe that the God of the Bible who made all the other months made the month of June also, and we're not going to surrender the month of June to these people. And our flag, the seven colored rainbow flag, which by the way, is the color of the rainbow, which occurs naturally. God made the rainbow and I've talked to you about its significance. You can read Genesis chapter 9. It reminds the Lord that he will never flood the earth again with water and it would my, reminds us that God promised to never do it. So my friends, no matter how, how much it may be raining in your life, it's going to stop. God's not going to let the flood take over you. And so I'm excited about it. We celebrate it all month long. I keep my little my flag here. It's nothing little about it. Handy. And uh, I'm, I'm surrounded by colors today. Got the flag right here. I got the flag behind me. You see the God first. I'm in the sanctuary and I'm fired up. And all uh, of June, we're going to celebrate and God is going to bless us real good. Now, if your pastor at your church is not celebrating Jesus Pride Month, how about giving him a call, stay respectful, stay nice, stay sweet, and say, Pastor, hey, how about considering doing this? How about considering uh, displaying God's rainbow in our church, in our sanctuary? How about uh, uh, taking sides? Uh, hey, pastor, how about not being mute nor a neutral on an issue where the enemy is not neutral at all? This past Tuesday, uh, yours truly, along with many of the workers of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and many uh, and, and other people who are not of our church, but who love Jesus Christ and love, listen to this, our children, we went to the school board uh, in Wake County uh, to uh, protest, to let our voices be heard concerning uh, some of the books, speaking of these people, uh, that these people aren't playing, some of the books that are in our 
public schools and in libraries across the country, across our state, things that are being uh, told to six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, to elementary school students, to, to, to students. These people have put books of filth and lies, books that are very explicit in depicting sexual acts that most people would find squeamish to discuss amongst adults, much less six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11, 12, 13, 14, so forth and so on. I mean books that describe such heinous sex acts that I will not describe them to you today. For if I read from some of these books you know sometimes uh, uh, those who uh, who control whether or not we're able to be on this medium they may block us because it's, it is that awful and that x-rated and they want this stuff to uh, be uh, made available for our children to read and I'm not just concerned about my grandchildren. I'm not just concerned about the children uh, of the parents who show up and who protest these things. I'm not just concerned about the children of parents who are Christians or children who come from a Christian home or come from a good church. All children, because you know what, my friends, they all go to the same schools. They all meet at the same uh, school uh, uh, bus stop. They, 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 they commune together. And we do not want our children's minds to be destroyed. These wicked people know that once uh, innocence is lost, it cannot be regained. They know that there are things that uh, once they have been seen, they can't, uh, kids cannot unsee. Once they uh, read them and nothing gets into your spirit. Nothing gets into your mind like what you read. What you read penetrates the conscious and the subconscious even more than what is said to you. And so they put these things in books. They put these things out here to try and destroy the minds of our children. And I want you to know I stood before the school board. And how about this? Several of the members of the school board, Brother Gary, they actually, actually wished us a happy pride month and they had on all their pride uh, necklaces and lapel pins and things like that not all of them but too many and uh, and so since they was wishing us a happy pride month I, I brought my flag and I wish them a happy Jesus pride month and I tell you we are having a ball here at the upper room church of God in Christ celebrating Jesus pride and we will continue to do so the Bible says this in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 13 uh, I, I know you saw me turning the pages here. It says, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. Let's teach the people, our children, who Jesus is. Let's teach them morals. Let's, let's leave subject matters that are too deep for six-year-olds and five-year-olds. Let's leave them alone. Why? I asked this question to the school board, and there were others who were just dynamic. Why are you trying to sexualize our children? Why do you think it is necessary for a six-year-old to read a story about a little uh, uh, a boy uh, 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 who was born and decided to become a little girl who was born and decided to become a boy and, and to, dispo, to, to expose this and to write it in such a way where a six-year-old can read this. So therefore, in the schools, in the schools, you're planting wicked thoughts like that in the minds of children. And see, these people know that these methods work. It works, you know, all truth, let me say this, all truth is parallel. Notice this, uh, the Bible speaks of the same method. It says the sower went forth to sow. So the kingdom of heaven is like a sower going forth to sow seeds. The devil knows that what we hear and what we read is sown 
into our spirit, sown into our conscience, sown into our subconscious. And sometimes that speed, that seed stays there and germinates and incubates and grows. And before you know it, five, ten years later, the child begins to express or demonstrate something that they read in a book in elementary school. My friends, this is wickedness to the core. And this is the kind of thing that they are promoting to our high schoolers, to our junior high, to our middle schoolers, to our elementary school students. And I'm saying to, to you out there, go to the school board meetings, go to the, to the libraries, check out some of these books, read the, the mess, the garbage that is being sent uh, to our, uh, that is being presented for our children to read and, and be careful when they have the bullying classes because, you know, everybody's against bullying, but they're using that to indoctrinate because as soon as the kids, the teacher says, I want to talk to you about bullying and how wrong bullying is. Then they begin to bring in all of these degenerate, unnatural, real lifestyles. Uh, little little uh, Jody was a boy. Jody now is a girl. And because Jody now is a girl, the kids are bullying Jody. So Jody is a victim because Jody became Judy. So we got to stop Jody, stop them from criticizing Jody. And, and, and stop them from calling Jody, Jody, because to call Jody, Jody, now that Jody self-identifies as Judy, is bullying Jody. You see, so your, your kids sit there, and then when the child come home from school, after being indoctrinated with this wickedness all day long, you're there preparing your kids home, that mom, that's dad. Hey, how was school today? Oh, mom, it was great. Dad, it was great. What'd you learn today? What did, what did they talk to you about today? Oh, they talked to us about bullying and how awful it is to be a bully. And you go, bravo, because bullying is wrong. But the child never explains how it was taught to them. That seed has been planted. And what, what seed are you talking about? Are you justifying bullying a child? No, but the seed that they wanted to plant was the idea that your son or your daughter can change themselves into the opposite sex or that God made a mistake and put a male, a boy's spirit in a female body, in a girl's body or a girl's spirit in a boy's body and all you got to do is just have a little operation and uh, just change it and you can live happily ever after. This is wickedness to the core and I'm saying that every one of us need to stand up and fight. Now I've gone too long with this but let me invite you tonight to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. This is Upper Room Church of God in Christ, Men's Weekend 2023. I'm excited about it. I thank God for the president of our men's ministry, uh, Elder Anthony Wilson. Elder Wilson is doing a tremendous job, and God's using him in a mighty way, and I'm just excited about the opportunity to work with this man of God and to work with the men of our church. Thank God for the men of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And we are so excited about what's going to take place uh, on uh, this week. And our theme is by the strength of God's hand. By the strength of God's hand, we can do what needs to be done. We got special guests coming in tomorrow night, Pastor Kyle Mann, and Pastor Mann is going to bless us real good. He's coming in from Buffalo, New York, and Friday night is family night. So uh, uh, families, moms, dad, get the children together, uh, uh, two-parent family, single-parent family, single people, family night. We're going, to, it's, we're going to be blessed in a mighty way. Tonight, yours truly, we'll be ministering the Word of God. And on, on uh, Saturday, we're having our big, big, big youth camp, youth football camp, and we're excited about that. We're expecting hundreds to show up young people teaching them athletes, great coaches and ex 
football players are going to be there and we're going to be sowing into uh, our young men. And on this Sunday, I have special guests, uh, the man of God, Pastor Joshua Lee, will be preaching the 8 and the 11 a.m. service. You don't want to miss any of our in-house men's conference, men's weekend 2023 by the strength of his hand right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. So join me tonight right here for Bible study, Bible preaching, Bible teaching, and when it's over, you're going to be stronger than you are right now because I'm telling you, I'm, I want to speak to you. On my exit, Gary, I just want to speak to him, tell him, Satan is not going to wear you out. Satan is not going to wear you down. I'm telling you right now, you are going to be the last man, the last saint standing in that battle you're in. I read somewhere the other day where one man said that it has been said that the only thing that's necessary to win a fight is to be the last man standing. And I'm telling you, you're going to be the last man standing. God bless you. We'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. <laughs>